cabinet met yesterday to arrest this issue and do it decisively. Cabinet met yesterday and resolved to amend all laws which flow out of the Constitution, amend all those laws that have to do with discrimination of this nature as we have experienced in an ugly way and bring about amendments that will stiffen penalties and make it unattractive for anyone, anyone to spew hatred against fellow citizens. I must actually say against humanity. That was the president giving a stern warning to anyone who speaks against humanity. We sure do hope that after his presidency, this very stiffening of laws will not be used against him. Well, this is not what I'm here for. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. We're very encouraged by everyone who subscribes, likes, comments, and engages on this channel in any way. See you on the other side. Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. We haven't been here in a while. I'm here with Mr. Jofaya. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, man. Feels yeah. like it's been a long time, eh? Yeah, I like your hairstyle, man. You're looking good. Oh, oh why thank you. <laughs> oh, why thank you. <laughs> what were you saying? How easy is it to do it? Uh, it's not to easy. To maintain hair like that. Ah, uh, It's not easy. But you're managing. Yeah, but I'm managing, eh? Mm. Yeah, good to see you. It's been a while. Thanks. Yeah, I'll check the next week. Ah, Lord Shedding. But I can assure you, Amazing Minds stands Zesco Zero. Yeah. <laughs> this one is we not is not sponsored by Zesco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zesco, we are back. Zesco, we are back. <laughs> so yeah, we have a number of things we're discussing. By the way, please do subscribe. Hit that pay on share. Show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. Uh, Mondays are the political discussions. Wednesdays, I'm looking at the points we have here. Uh, we have a lot to discuss today. Eh? Really, really a lot. No. For real. It's a it's a mouthful. Yeah, so Mondays are political discussions. Wednesdays are the educative segment and Fridays are Bible talks. We are back this week in full form, full force. Uh, we had a few encumbrances due to Zesco and whatnot. Uh, Not. Yeah, but we're back. Uh, we're now relying on copper belt energy. But <laughs> yeah, we wish. I do hear that uh, Dangote wanted to invest in power mm -hmm. some years back okay. and Zesco, I don't know how true this is. This is all alleged, mm. but Zesco wasn't too forth, wasn't too uh, open armed about it. So they kind of okay. blocked him. I don't know how true it is because they want to monopolize mm. the whole electricity gig. No, I don't know how true it is as well. Yeah, but by now, don't you think some foreigners should have come in to invest in our electricity 
Do you think there could have been attempts by now? Yeah, because also, you know, investing in electricity is not a small feat. So mm. it takes time. It takes Dangote kind of money. Yeah, and time also. And time. You could have all the money, but time. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if your investment is not in a five-year horizon, you might not want to invest. In but look at how long Zambia has been paying for. We are 61 this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does that say so about 61 our... 61 or 60? 61. 19, oh, 60, 60, 60. Yeah, <laughs> 60. Yeah. Uh, 60 years and we haven't made a plan for an alternative. Mm. With the Kariba Dam that was built by the Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> that was before UNIP? Uh, yeah, I think that was built in the 1960s, I think. 1960s, mm. eh? So imagine... I hear Queen Elizabeth actually contributed a lot. Yeah? Yeah. So that's a... We are still using colonial power sources. Mm -hmm. 60 years later and... Zambia still experiences load shedding. I mean, during MMD, I was alive during MMD, we had load shedding. During um, PF, we had load shedding. During PF again, we had load shedding. I forgot to say during MMD again, we had load shedding. <laughs> <laughs> and now during UPND, we have load shedding. We know the next party that comes into power will also give us its own one, two, three years of load shedding. They always give us two years of good power <laughs> just towards the end as we are about to vote. Um, but yeah, of course we expect, this is 2024, 2025, end of 2025, this is a prophecy, write it down. End of 2025, going into 2026, we'll have a lot of power. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we hope for a lot of rain. We, we, no, automatically yeah, we'll have, you, you know way, what? The way you're looking at it, it's like you're talking about political parties here. Yeah. Yeah, but no, they, okay, here's here's my point. Leaders, our so leaders, you, 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 understand, you understand you understand my, my point though, right? Yeah, like this this thing has been happening. The, the fact again. that when we were in UPA, when we were in MMD, we were still a young country. Yes. When we were in UNIP, we were still a young country. Yeah. Uh we should have had people within I don't know, engineering, architecture of of the planning of the city mm -hmm. who could have foretold uh you give scenarios, future mm -hmm. scenarios. Uh in finance we call it hedging. Mm -hmm. What happens if you, if there is a drought, what happens if there is this? What happens if there is that? Mm -hmm. And because of these eventualities, you make alternative plans. Mm -hmm. But even with evidence of load shedding throughout these times, mm -hmm. we have not sat down to say, okay, what happens if there is a drought? What happens if there was a three-year drought? Mm -hmm. You understand, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it does not rain again this year, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. If it doesn't rain this year, oh. Yeah, Zesco, so starting from the, their bosses, yeah. they told us. In fact, starting from the board chair himself. Yeah. Movie, is it? Vixen movie. Mm. He told us himself that if we if we don't have power, if we don't have, okay, if we didn't implement this load shedding, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have sustained power until October. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have survived as Zesco until October. We wouldn't have been providing electricity yeah. until October. Do you so know the, the funny means? part for me is they were talking about how they needed to give us eight hours of load shedding in the beginning mm -hmm. in order to... I don't know what the purpose was mm -hmm. where, like, if power... If load shedding is still going to increase and increase and increase, mm -hmm. then what was the whole point of telling us, no, we're giving you eight hours now to save for later? I don't know if you understand what I mean. It was going to make more sense if towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. the hours would be less. Then they say, we're giving you more hours now mm -hmm. for less. But that's the that's what it sounded like. Like, do, do you understand what I mean? It sounded like mm -hmm. they're going to give us eight, power, eight hours of load shedding the whole year. Mm -hmm. It seems as we keep going, mm -hmm. the hours keep increasing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that's what will keep happening. That's what will keep happening. Yeah, without going much into it, because I've noticed that we are now talking about Lord Jedi. Oh, yeah. Which is not <laughs> easy, but, you know, this just shows how much this has affected us. Yes. Yeah. Well, we are not able to, to give out the show last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. In paid partnership with Zesco. Every time <laughs> you have a late, uh, we have a late upload or we miss a show, know that it's in paid partnership with Zesco. <laughs> <laughs> you have your excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
Anything that doesn't go right, Zesco. <laughs> <laughs> I will be giving ex- already we use Zesco as an excuse. Ah, we will see my boy. This is of no boy. I'm my light. Like even things that are not connected. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why tomato you do? Ah, Zesco. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So we have but a. Does H affect my businesses? It is. It yeah. is. It is. Yeah. But I just don't know how it's affecting those who sell vegetables, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is. It's no, just they, not, they are not getting more customers. It's, it's like it's like the dollar when when they are selling vegetables for higher because the dollar has gone up. Yet mm. they get them from the backyard. Yeah, but it also makes sense that the people who are selling vegetables are not uh, are not people are not coming to buy because they are not uh, functioning mm. at the barber shop or their salon. So mm. business is hard. So therefore, they are they are downsizing, and when they downsize, they increase the price. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's logically normal, but uh, yeah, maybe in practice it's something else. So in in this case, it's it's a different kind of inflation. Little money chasing after too many goods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, we have a number of things to discuss on the show. I can't believe we we haven't started. Uh, <laughs> we have. <laughs> no, we have. <laughs> yeah. Did I give the intros and everything I did? Eh? Subscribe oh, yeah. uh, where the show is available. Okay. Uh, we are discussing a couple of things today. Four political, four politicians and a civil rights activist arrested and given bail after spending a few nights in the police cells. Uh, President HH makes changes at ministerial level and cadres are back. The Yay. First time was a woman uh, justice minister in Zambia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the changes have been made just after they talked about stiffening of laws, but we'll talk about that. And then after that, I talked about cadres being back, right? Yay. Then uh, Socialist Party uh, rally blocked by police. No news here. Yes, so that's what we're discussing today. Um, Christian Democratic Party, CDP President Danny Pole and Lumezi, Member of Parliament, Munia Zulu, have been granted bail in cases where they have been charged with seditious practices. Mr. Pule, or rather Dr. Pule, has been granted 150,000 quarter bail in his own recognizance by Lusaka Principal Resident Magistrate Sylvia Muninia. Magistrate Muninia also has also tasked Dr. Pule to find two working sureties as part of the bail conditions. Dr. Pule's trial is scheduled, scheduled for June 7. 2024. Meanwhile, Lumezi Member of Parliament Munia Zulu has obtained a 250,000 kwacha bail in his own recognizance. Mr. Zulu has filed an application. Mr. Zulu filed an application for bail before Lusaka Magistrate Fides Hamaundu. Magistrate Hamaundu has set June 17 for Mr. Zulu's trial. First few slides are always a challenge to read. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Zulu, Dr. Puli, and three others are charged with seditious seditious practices. The three others are Forum for Democracy and Development, FDD leader, Edith Nawakwi, who should have been retired by now, civil rights mm-hmm. activist, Bren, Brebna Changala, before a member of parliament, Maureen Mawonga. Ms. Nawakwi was yesterday granted 100,000 kwacha bail by Lusaka principal resident, Irene Wishimanga, while Mr. Changala was bailed on Monday by Lusaka High Court Judge Geoffrey Mulenga. For a member of parliament, Maureen Mawonga is still detained as her bail application hearing comes up tomorrow before Lusaka resident Trevor Cassander. Well, weren't they all being charged with the same thing? Seditious? No, no. It, it, it you see, that's it. why this thing has been, it's, it's fishy somehow, you know? Yeah? Yeah, because they've been changing goalposts, the police and whoever charges. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, today seditious, today... Initially, they said hate speech. Yeah. And then they said uh, seditious. And then they said, yeah, because also uh, at some point they said espionage and uh, whatever, trying to cause a tribal war. Mm, mm. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like they are, they are neither here nor there. Yeah. They are, they are trying to find something. Because these guys say too many things. You don't even know where to pinpoint. Like there's so much illegality in their speeches. Mm. You are, you're thinking, Okay, uh, I know that was attempted. I uh, know no, that was. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, uh, Brave Dutch Angala said something about, uh, you know, it was the JJ issue. Yeah. All this, by the way, came as a result of JJ. Yeah. yeah Brave Dutch Angala said something like, uh, this uh, abduction can only be sponsored by the state. This is post- mm. state sponsored terrorism. Then he did now, we said, uh, HH has taken JJ. 
Mm. Who is taking us back to the days of abduction and blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> yeah, then these other guys they talk. Oh, they, 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 there's Maureen Mabonga yeah. who spoke about who said uh, I think they quoted what the the reason why they arrested her is because she talked about uh, uh, do you want all of us to be carrying guns now? Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll play you some of the speeches or some of the. Uh, seditious statements. <laughs> yeah, I've been failing to yeah <laughs> to describe the things. <laughs> I know. Let's just that, play the things. They, they will judge for themselves. Munia Zulu. Mr. President, we've heard statements from your cadres declaring Southern Province and all goes on area for some of us. If that's the case, we shall also declare Eastern Province and all go area for your tribesmen and women. Yeah. If you are going to go this route, Mr. President, let us do it. Let the Northerners be in the North. We Easterners will be in the East. You Southerners be in, in the South. We can no longer continue, Mr. President, to live in a country that has lived 60 years after independence. The worst of the patriotic front, we never witnessed a member of parliament being abducted. The worst of the patriotic front, we never saw a member of parliament's residence being bent down. You at your best, member of parliament has disappeared. At your best, at your methodical, a house has been bent down. And we know there is a list. Mr. President, in case you do not know, the people you give these instructions to have families and information is filtering. We know Binwa is next, I am next, but get this very loud and clear. You can come for me. My children will come and revenge. Maureen Mabonga. People of Zambia, I'm speaking on behalf of the people from Muchinga province, Luapula province, and Northern province. I think we have all seen that all this is targeted at us. I can speak this without fear or favor. This is targeted at us, the Bemba speaking people. And the Easterners, it has even gone to the Easterners. It has nothing to do with the personality. Because if you look at even the hatred that the UPND have displayed, it has nothing to do with politics. It's personal. And the only thing that I can say is it is getting out of hand. And all of us in Bemba, we say, And I want to tell the UPND that the Bembas, the Easterners, are larger in number. What they are displaying, we can even do it better than they are doing. The violence that they are displaying, we can do it better. It doesn't matter, they may have uh, the government machinery. How many police officers do we have? You can count how many members we have. You can count how many Easterners we have. So let it not get to that level. And finally, Dr. Danny Pole. Where that uh, President Haka Inde has been instrumental in uh, dividing this country. You may be aware of the fact that uh, this country is divided between the, you know, uh, there is a special uh, section of the country called the Zambezi region, southern, western, and northwestern uh, provinces of Zambia. Most of the key political appointments have come from that region. But now, when you go further as to what is happening in the public service, in the parastatos, he has even ignored the other uh, two provinces, western and uh, northwestern. The focus, if you follow what's going on, is that he's appointing only Tongas to, f- to fill those positions. Some of you are not aware of the fact that even headmasters are being removed, police officers are being removed. Uh, to re- be replaced by those from southern province. This is not acceptable. This is not the Zambia we want. I believe that, you know, Ubufiwaimu Kateka was Wafia Sana. I promise you, Kutila, all appointments will be across the board. I believe all of you have, your, you have seen for yourselves what is going on. This is not acceptable. I was recently in uh, Chiengi. And do you know who is the council secretary in Chienge is? A man from southern province. I won't mention his name, but it, it begins with her. Her. And that has become common. It begins with her. 
<laughs> These guys have guts. <laughs> like yeah. all of them were just nailing the nail, hitting the nail on its head. They have forgotten where we are in Africa, that in Africa, you have free speech, but no guarantee of freedom <laughs> after speech. <laughs> yeah. To me, the silver lining is us laughing through all this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because these are politicians. They try to use this card to divide us. Yeah. And it's slowly, it's not, it's losing its... Uh, it's diminishing. It's, it's diminishing disu- returns. D- sweetening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The returns are diminishing. Yeah. So very soon, this tribal thing will no longer be a thing. Yeah, that politicians can use to gain votes or sympathy. Mm. Yeah, so and they they always end up in the sales. Why they do it, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't this what Shimagambi went in for? <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, okay, also because you know, these are Munya Zulu is a member of parliament, so this is someone who was voted for mm. by people in mass, mm. same as Maureen Mawonga. So these people are influential. Yeah, yeah. So. To me, actually, does Danny Pole have any government opposition right now? Any who? Uh, Danny Pole parliamentary seat? No, anything? No, no, no. Nothing. No, it's just an opposition party mm. leader. Mm. Yeah. So to me, actually, feel I feel pity for the people of Lumezi and the people of Mfue. Mm. Your representatives mm, the, they are saying you, nonsense. Yes. <laughs> you see, sixty years after independence, I think by now, for us, the normal people, yeah. it's not. Uh, we don't look at someone's, and we've said this a lot in this show. Mm. We don't look at someone's tribe before we associate them with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we don't even know our friend's tribe yeah. and all those things. You know, being different in terms of this one being Tonga, this one being Tumbuka, to us it makes us proud. Yeah. We joke with it, we laugh with it. Yeah. Yeah. So to have our politicians with a straight face saying the people from Southern Province stay in Southern Province, mm. it's embarrassing. Yeah, and coming to think of it, why do you suppose? Why do you suppose these guys are throwing such? Why are they throwing the whole JJ thing on the UPND? In simple words, I mean, like, may, is that something we're missing? Is that something? So, yeah, it's very questionable. It's is that something question. they know that we don't it's know? It's a good question. I don't have an answer to that. I was also asking myself immediately. You usually after. know these things. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking myself just yeah. immediately when he got abducted. Abducted. These guys came out guns blazing. I yeah, think, firstly, why are you blaming by the way, the, one, why are you blaming a political party? I know. How do you blame a political party for someone's someone's disappearance? By the way, uh, we didn't mention this the last time we talked about JJ's disappearance, but JJ's not was addressed, uh, which was supposedly a suicide not. I would like to assume was addressed to the country and not his family. <laughs> the man has three wives, the ones we know. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote a message to the country <laughs> instead of his family. Like, Imagine. dear dear Zambians, no, JJ, I don't want you to send me a message. Send it to your wife and children. Mm. Yeah, which makes yeah. us question it further. Yeah. So, you know, to put it into context, this guy, JJ, oh, not this guy, this uh, member of parliament of Petaoke Central hmm. went missing uh, <laughs> in very bizarre circumstances yeah. and questionable ones at that. Yeah. And then he was found. In very questionable circumstances, yeah, with, with no major injuries, no wounds, exactly. only dehydration, apart from exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and a few bruises that everyone was trying to avoid. Uh, uh, yeah, bruises which you can get by wearing it. Yes, tight trousers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there was drama because the the family and his friends didn't want him to be moved from a private hospital to a high security government organization where he'll be which questioned is, which is even a bigger hospital yeah where he'll be questioned yeah so this all happened in very questionable circumstances and then we have members of parliament from the opposition speaking like this yeah trying to use now that to spread the uh, tribal hate so to say yeah yeah which uh I'm as I said in the beginning I'm I'm comforted by the fact that you know to us we look at them as jokers yeah yeah and I believe every old mini Zambian should look at them as jokers. Yeah. Because this can divide us. I mean, guys, isn't Banda like the most common name in Zambia? If a Banda is abducted, could you really tie that to Eastern Province? Imagine. Guys, Imagine. honestly speaking, Banda is like the most common name in Zambia. <laughs> Tell me any name you know that's more common than Banda. I'm waiting. And if you can tell me that name, if they are abducted, would you tie it to where they are from? Like... It's just crazy. I don't know where these things are coming from. They look like they are just looking to be freedom fighters. They want that car record that they were also put inside. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. You see, that's the other thing. Yeah. Maybe they want to be arrested. They want Maybe to be arrested been... so that they get uh, yeah, anyway. The state is playing right. Before into we also the, get yeah. in for 
yeah. sedition. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the, 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 the state is playing right into their hand. Uh, yeah, I, I hope not. Mm. Because I think at this point they have successfully irritated the state. Yes, and to me actually yeah. antagonizing them, the arrests and everything, it just causes more confusion. What do you think? They should have been ignored? Yeah, I would ignore them. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you know, funny things, Mr. Lungo is, is selectively quiet on certain issues. Mm-hmm. Like he knows where to poke and where not to poke. Mm-hmm. Like he would talk about, ah, no, Mr. President, uh, handle your cutters. Mm-hmm. He would talk about no re-election. But when it comes to JJ, he's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's been quiet? Yeah, yeah because... Oh, but he said something at some point. What, what did he say? That thing, he made a post on Facebook. Yeah, but anyway, it was the time that his family was being questioned. At yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that post, he also mentioned JJ there to say that you people are concentrating on arresting people who spoke about JJ instead of finding the people that actually kidnapped him. Yeah. So Why don't they ask JJ? If you want to know who kidnapped JJ, ask him. <laughs> I would love to hear from the police. I know. There was confusion, by the way. All he's saying is, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, just just a few back pains to be. <laughs> oh, no, we don't know that for sure. JJ. <laughs> we JJ. don't know that for sure. Who picked was... you from the car? <laughs> eh? Who? Honest, JJ. Who picked yeah. you from the car? Yeah, so actually he was interviewed yeah. for a very lengthy period. And apparently his lawyer was around, Mr. Sakuiwa Sikota. Who <laughs> Mr. Sakuiwa Sikota, after coming out from that meeting, <laughs> after coming out yeah. of that meeting, Mr. Sakuiwa Sikota said, because... After that, the state came out, the, the, the minister of, uh, there's an acting minister of home affairs now, mm. uh, Mr. Ambrose Lufuma. He came out and said, we've been investigating this case, but JJ has not said anything right now. He has mm. not mentioned the people. He has not mentioned anyone. <laughs> JJ, who took you? Uh, you know, now, it's, it's hard to explain. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the same interview, his lawyer came out to the public and said, JJ actually mentioned people. Mm. He mentioned mm. someone from State House, mm. uh, two, actually, two people from State House, and you mentioned the UPND official, high-ranking official. I don't want to mention their names because these people now, because what the lawyer said, the people started sharing. So Sean uh, Tembo uh, shared it, Savoyimbo Eda shared it. I think there was someone else. These state house officials, they went to report, instead of reporting only Sakuiba Scott, they also reported these people who shared the information <laughs> to, <laughs> to the police. Inside, everyone. <laughs> so soon, a short table for simply sharing what the lawyer said, they'll be in trouble. How about the lawyer himself? <laughs> <laughs> the lawyer, too, is in trouble. <laughs> oh, he's in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sakuiba Scott is one who was quoting scripture, scriptures yes. in church eh? on yes, behalf of yes, Oka. Eh? Do you feel like it's 1990? <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this whole thing is interesting, but now it looks like I hope we hear what really happened, what really transpired. Yeah, I, I really do hope. But guys, JJ was went missing, it's almost going to two weeks now. Mm. Let us hear something concrete because the exactly. whole country was on its feet. Yes, the former president was at the police mm-hmm. with a host mm-hmm. and other political parties, the Chalakatekas of this world, mm-hmm. uh, who has been silent. Uh, on the JJ. issue, yeah. Last I heard that uh, say uh, talk about was wanting pictures with ECO mm. uh, during their time at the police on their live oh, broadcast. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, but okay. I expected she'd be in the cells. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's been although she's been speaking about JJ. She has. Yeah, but just trading so carefully. Eh? Mm? Just trading carefully. Not so strongly, yeah. Yeah, these people are just being malicious. When Amuni Azulu, that's I know they even knew yeah. where they would end up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the president um addressed these speeches that everyone seems so free to give. To be honest, I do think um the president is being taken advantage of because he's been patient. In what sense? Because he's been quiet on their previous issues of talking, he doesn't really respond. He doesn't really what do anything. What is he supposed to do? I guess just keep quiet until it gets too much. Is it too much now? I think so. So do you think that his actions are just fine? Well, let's play the clip. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we'll play the, the, the clip and I'll, I'll, I'll give my comments. Please. Cabinet met yesterday to arrest this issue and do it decisively. Cabinet met yesterday and resolved to amend all laws which flow out of the Constitution 
amend all those laws that have to do with discrimination of this nature, as we have experienced in an ugly way, and bring about amendments that will stiffen penalties and make it unattractive for anyone anyone to spew hatred against fellow citizens. I must actually say against humanity. The president. Yeah, I think uh, it's good that he addresses the issue if it gets out of hand. I just don't think it should go as far as amending any laws. Mm -hmm. The thing with amending laws is that in the future, he will want to say something. And then they're going to say, ah, Mr. President, when you were president, there was a law you amended. Uh, inside, sir. Yeah, but that's that shouldn't even be the deterrent. Yeah, yeah, that shouldn't be the deterrent. Yeah. I just feel okay. Okay, I hear you. Yeah, uh, and I I sort of agree with you on the part that you know we don't have to change our laws. Yeah, we have sufficient laws. Mm. Uh, this guy is already. They said something that is uh, could be divisive. It mm. is not to me and my friends. I mean. <laughs> I'll go to Chipata, I'll go to Southern Province, to Livingstone. Mm. That's now, but I came from uh, Solwezi. I'll mm. go to these areas. No one will ever stop me. Yeah. No yeah. one will, will even need to know my tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm ending laws because he also didn't give us any substance. He just said uh, uh, cabinet met and then we came up with our, our conclusions and then we'll be taking mm, to Parliament. To arrest the issue, number one. Yeah. Number two, to amend all laws. Exactly. He said so, all laws. Yeah, so, I, I mean, we don't know what's coming. You know, in Rwanda, it's a crime to ask someone there, right? Oh, yeah, I hear so. Yeah. But you see, we don't want to mirror such because in our country, we are proud of that. Yeah. That might bring more problems than good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, we need to tread very carefully when it comes to this. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it comes to our laws. Yeah, but as well, come and come, as you are saying, uh, they will amend the laws and then they come back to bite them. Mm. Yeah. I know, sir, chiten kwa tumangira inside. Yeah, because I feel like the lines are blurred. That's yeah. why when they were arrested, it was hate speech, then espionage, trying to cause a tribal uh, There's no specific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and following up on the same issue, we see some ministerial changes, which we can only assume uh, maybe because these people are more effective in uh, dealing with such matters. So President Hakainde Ijilema has appointed Honorable Mulamba, is that Mulambo or Mulamba? Mulambo Haimbe SC MP as Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation and Honorable Princess Kasune MP as Minister of Justice. President Hichilema has transferred Honorable Collins Njovo MP to the Ministry of Water, Development and Sanitation, and Honorable Mike Elton Mbasha MP Mbosha. to the Mbosha MP to the Ministry of Green Economy and Environment. The President congratulates the ministers and wishes them God's blessings in their new roles. Yeah, so we can see some ministerial changes yeah. There now we have the first justice, uh, the first uh, female justice. Female, minister. yeah, first yeah. female justice minister. Ah, oh, some of these guys who are going to be found on the wrong side mm. of the law mm. should really be ready for their sentences. Why? <laughs> no, it's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Unless you get inside for. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, those are. The, 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 what do you think about the appointments? By the way, do you know these people? I don't really know these people, but my assumption is that mm -hmm. his uh, the appointments. Mm. may have something to do with what he earlier said about stiffening laws. That's why the tempered ministries, justice, mm -hmm. that's my okay. thought. Yeah. So I think that the first of all, the, this, of course, maybe it was necessitated by the, we've had a vacancy at the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs okay. since Kaku was, uh, since he resigned. Oh, after oh that yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've had a vacancy and this Mulambo Aimbe has been hacked. Hmm? Has been acting. <laughs> <laughs> He's been acting from the time that uh, the guy left. So uh, maybe he was trying to fill in the vacancy. Then Princess Kasune also has got a great track record, by the way. Okay. Yeah, she's got no legal background. Mm. Yeah, because we've seen that uh, the justice ministers mostly uh, we see the ones that have got legal backgrounds. They're the ones who are selected. Yeah, it's mm. not like they have to have a legal mm. background. Yeah, but she doesn't have herself. Yeah, but uh, it's fair to say that she's done a lot of work. 
mm. especially when it comes to human rights and everything. She's one of the HIV AIDS advocates, okay. very strong one. She actually came out that she's HIV positive a long, long time ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, there's one interesting thing that she did that I think I should mention. Uh, so the time she discovered, sure she was born with it apparently. Okay. So the time she discovered, she started a campaign where, because she's from Central Province. Mm -hmm. So she, she, she used to meet up with these truck drivers, pretend as if she's a sex worker. Ah, yes. Okay. When they get them, when they, the truck drivers get her, and then they're about to, mm -hmm. and then he explained to them and sensitizes them about HIV. <laughs> ah, yeah. Also, it was a way of like capturing their attention. Yes, yes. So it was so famous. Actually, that's when we knew. But wasn't that dangerous for her? Princess Kasuni. It was, but I mean, <laughs> bravery is dangerous. Mm. If you have to prove a point, you have yeah. to go through a dangerous procedure. Mm. Okay, that's yeah. it. That's interesting. Yeah. And she's done a lot. I mean, she's okay. recognized world over for that. Okay. Yeah. Is she an actual princess uh, or that's just her name? I don't I think it's her name. It's just her name, eh? I don't know. She's ah. Princess Annika. So I, 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 would have, I would have assumed maybe she's a princess like from one of yeah. the... Yeah, it's just funny how obsessed they are with calling them honorable, honorable. <laughs> oh, the the MPs? Uh, yeah, in the, in the, in the oh, the the, 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 the ministers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honor, honor. <laughs> is it a title what? I, I I believe it is. I think all but you all can't ministers. Write this for N. I don't yeah. even like call, calling them honorables myself. Uh, I like a line that one artist said: "Honorable, you have no honor," mm -hmm. which is a very common exactly. thing amongst our honorables. Who said that? It seems. Bobby is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he was talking about lot shedding and <laughs> yeah, 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 with your maps. Those yeah, yeah, good old yeah, days. yeah, 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 yeah. Then maybe we should mention this that there was uh, a story of a younger driver hmm. who was reported missing by the wife. I think that was uh, on Friday, and then that story went round. I think Thursday and Friday. Yeah, he was discovered dead. Oh yeah, discovered dead around Mimosa area. Yeah, um, it it appears nothing was stolen from him. Uh, the car was not stolen. Uh, we don't yes. Know, did they say about the phones? I don't know much about the phones. Okay, yeah, but I was I was referring to the car. No, no. The car was found abandoned or or just left, yeah. and he was found dead somewhere. That's quite sad, yeah. quite unfortunate. I yeah. think younger drivers should move with um, um, spray. There's this um, paper spray. Paper spray. They, I think they should get tasers. These things are. Relatively cheap. Pepper spray you can get for like 150, 250. A taser you can get for 250, 350. Uh, you guys invest in such things. Move with a taser. Move with a with pepper spray. Find out if it's legal to do so first. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, if possible, have a car tracker. Have a dash cam. Secure yourselves, guys. We can't tell you to stop because obviously uh, you need to make money. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our so thoughts and be, prayers yeah. yeah it would be interesting to hear from the police i would like to know what really happened because it's it's a bit sketchy yeah like like, like yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy and since since that story Very i think man. since that story i was i was on yango mm. um and the yango driver was shaken up mm. you know he was telling have you heard about the story that happened ish mm. yeah so yeah, yeah it's going to affect business yeah. yeah, and also for the people who are moving around. And and it's not the first. There was one who who died in yeah. Uh, yeah. was that uh, Kamala South, Kamala South area, Excuse me. or something like that. Mm, I don't know. I thought I heard Kalingalinga or something. Yeah, there was one that died around. I think Kibala South area, if I mm. remember where I was. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Uh, sad development. Yeah, we hope that we get something concrete from the police. Yeah. Um. In other news, cadres are back. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, check this one out. Kitwe wan. Kitwe wan. Zero. Let me pick up the bus. Ford. 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 Five years is a long time, guys. What you will see during um, a president's term in office is the breaking of promises, disappointments, uh, which all lead up to 
a glorious one last year in the fifth year. Mm-hmm. It's a trend we always see. We know it will happen. 2026 will be a beautiful year. Uh, it's just disappointing to see things repeat themselves. Uh, this is something we never expected to see. This is something we never expected to see, not in our wildest imaginations under this government. No, not in mine. Like, yeah. I, perso- no, I personally never expected that when UPND comes into power, we would mm-hmm. ever see anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the thing is that... Uh, uh, we saw this kind of behavior even before they, they came into office. Yeah. Yeah. So HH was saying he's going to change it from inside. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess what uh, political <laughs> happenings recently are teaching me is never to trust the politician, no matter how good they look, how clean they look, how mm-hmm. big their smile is, no matter who they are, never trust the politician. Politicians are just that, politicians. Yeah. And by the yeah. way, this incident should be on a Tuesday or on a Monday or Tuesday. I don't know. It's the same day there was a burial of a, a UPND official day. Mm, I believe this, this they were coming from or going to the burial. I don't right? know, but it, it was the same day. So we saw a lot, actually. You know, There are a lot of videos. Mm. Even the way they were moving, you know, getting the Zokwerepa Mawindiyama bus and all those things, harassing people. They broke some vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, they harassed a lot of people, actually. They actually injured someone, apparently. Yeah, so it was a lot of chaos and a lot of confusion. And by the way, on uh, on Saturday, that's like a week ago or something. There was mm. a Saturday on the first of June. The, there was supposed to be a rally for the New Heritage Party in uh, Mandevu constituency. So of course the police went there and blocked them. Uh, but also we saw PA or UPND cadres with machetes, pangas. Mm. Yeah, in the open. And the police was just watching. Yeah, so this kind of lawlessness. Um, of course, it's not like uh, in my wildest dream, I didn't expect it to come back. Yeah. I mean, to me, it was a 50-50 thing. Yeah, but I was hoping that it was gone. Because also, I think HH is, has presented himself as an upright person, so to say. You know? mm. Someone who's not into this, this such thing. Yeah. yeah. Because to me, that's outright thuggery. Yeah. Mm-mm. <laughs> No, we'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's outright thuggery. Yeah. That was being displayed there. <laughs> and uh, the person we should least hear from on this issue had some comments to make, uh, Mr. Edgar Chagolungu. Who was the president under the oppressive PF regime? Take a look. And I think I want to address President Hitchley directly. Say, so, Mr. President, take charge. You are the commander in chief. And the police listen to you. Tell them to do the right thing to stop this hooliganism, this thuggery we are seeing. And don't tell me that it was happening in PF, therefore it should continue, because that's how we lost it. And we are lucky we lost it, but we kept it and we gave it to you. Now you want to kill it for us. Please, Mr. President, stop this nonsense. At least he does acknowledge that he is the commander in chief of the armed forces. At least he acknowledges and you that the police him. listen to him. And yeah. he also acknowledges that we kicked them out because of the same. Exactly, even though I don't understand the last part where he talks about you're spoiled for us. Yeah, I, I did also I really, understand I really that because I thought I'm making dinner. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, quite frankly, I don't know whether Mr. Lungo wants to stand again. I kind of do doubt he does. I just think he wants to go with the name of having fought for Zambia's. Go ahead. Um, I mean, he's the only mm. uh, former head of state we have. He wants to be remembered mm. for having fought. Yeah, for Zambia's, yeah. To the contrary, I think he actually wants to stand again. Yeah. He wants to be the president again. And he's thinking there's a chance. And this is why, because as you are saying, he's not the right person to say this. Mm. So they are presenting it like, uh, you know, uh, this is what the UPND is providing. We can do better, you know. This is why they are even not ashamed to say that this is what led to their kicking out mm. of office. It's because of the same thing. They feel like uh, their sins have been forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, which some of us have not. <laughs> if we get to that point of, and I'm thinking that you stand. Actually, I think the chances are high. Yeah. That he wants to stand. Yeah. Which you it's, don't it's, tell it's, you it's, that. It's a 50-50. Uh, yes. it, it, either he could stand or either he will stand or he wants to be remembered as that mm-hmm. senior guy. You know, there's no one else that... Uh, 
if HH wanted to ever ask for presidential advice from a former president in Zambia, there's only one person he can yes. go to. Yes. Um, and if we have ever seen former presidents weigh in on issues where they say, no, young man, mm. don't do it like this, mm -hmm. I guess that's the role mm. also that he kind of is trying to play. I don't think so. Um, and well, this is an assumption. Yeah, ideally, yeah. that would be the best thing to do, the right thing to do. Mm. But to me, this is it's, just it's, a, it's, it's also about methods. Um, maybe his methods. Mm. Uh, anyway, anyway, let's see. Okay, anyway, you have your opinion. Yeah. My opinion yeah. is that he wants to stand. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's see where this. And myself, I'm, um, um, I I think I'm eighty percent sure that he wants to stand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think he wants to stand? The president did respond to uh, the Kada issues, and yeah, check it out. Those guys who were doing thuggery yesterday went to bury a colleague. May so rest in peace. And from the burial site, all before started harassing people, throwing obscenities at innocent road users. I'm expecting each and every one of them to be arrested. <laughs> you can't claim to do that in the name of supporting HH. I call him a man. Uh -uh, no. You can't claim that if you get arrested, you will not vote for HH in 2026. Maybe I don't need your vote. I don't want to be a president who is produced by thugs and turn me into a thug. I corner. No. And indeed, the police do listen to the president. Uh, five arrests were made in accordance with the same issue mm -hmm. shortly after. Yeah, so I guess Mr. Lungo was right. I don't like whatever <laughs> is happening, you know. Yeah. Yeah, let me explain why. First of all, the police said they made these arrests before the president talked about it. Okay. Yeah. So you should also understand that there was a sort of an uproar, especially on social media, on radio. Uh, we had this issue very hot on radio. Yeah. Uh, people were saying, oh, so the cutters are back and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like that's what actually necessitated the president to hold that press briefing where he spoke about mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, although the way that he came out in that press briefing, to me, is not good enough. Of course, if you listen to that short clip that we just played, it seems like, oh, well, he's listening and he's cracking the whip and all those things. And you might easily lose it. To me, actually, it looks like from the, his statement, he's micromanaging the police. Yeah. Why is, he, why is it that when he says arrest? Because, by the way, the UPN confirmed that there are some 20 of their members arrested. Okay. The next day after the briefing, and when the police was reporting, they reported those five that, those five that you talk about, those were for aggravated robbery and all those things. Mm. But they claim it was the same day. You see, these are the same guys we're talking about. Mm. But the UPN they are also saying that they arrested twenty of them after the the, the president spoke. So on face value, it might look good. The president is pushing the police around to do their work, which is not supposed to be the case. Because mm. in Mandevu, these guys had machetes, the pangas, right in front of the police. And the police couldn't do anything. Yeah. It's the same thing that we saw in the PF. Yeah. Uh, so, to me, and in the same breath, the president also mentioned, because it doesn't make sense. First, is like it's like he's taking responsibility. Then they, on the other part, he mentioned, uh, we these guys are the same people who have just mutated. Like to say that they actually people who came from other political parties mm. to come and join mm. our political oh, yeah, yeah. and bring this thing here. So it's like he's refusing, he's denying the problem at the same time trying to take responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. He also spoke about something like uh, if the police fail, I'm going to get in the army. <laughs> of which people had a lot of things to say about that. Yeah. You see, the problem to me, to for the president to, to be behaving like this, is because the president, as much as he's a president for all of us as Zambians, he's biased. He's a political party leader. Yeah. So when there are issues to do with two political parties that are opposing each other, and the president seems to be the one who's controlling the police to deal with the situation, it won't be fair because the president is biased himself. Mm. Yeah. So to me, it's, it's not good that the president is coming out like that. If he has to crack the whip, let him crack the whip. Let him talk about his political party. But not to, to be coming out in the open to say the police do their job. I'm expecting everyone to be arrested. No, if you're failing, I'll bring in the army. 
that's a bit overreaching. Yeah. And dangerous. Yeah. Because it's only time until power gets to your head. <laughs> and then you do something very drastic. Commander in chief of the armed forces, I guess. Yeah. So indeed, he's he's got the right to say what he just said. Yeah. And he's got the right to push the police around and the military around. Mm. But uh, the way that you do it, and also the timing of it, do, we, ma- do you think the matters. situation? Do you think the situation is we've reached a level where we need the military and the police have failed? Because you know mm. we've not had any political rally of opposition ever since we had Grafio Musamba as the Inspector General. Yeah, and himself is on record saying that we are not allowing these political rallies because the other side is ready to attack, meaning the UPND. So it's like he's saying we're afraid of the UPND cadres. So if we allow an opposition party to hold the rally, there'll be chaos. Now, if the police is saying that, it means already they're admitting to their failures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going on with the police, actually, um, a rally in Kitwe was uh, surprisingly accept, denied, then allowed, then denied. Um, we saw a letter issued out. The Socialist Party were trying to have a rally mm-hmm. in Kitwe. Uh, a, letter, a letter was issued out. This was the... Yeah, I know, right? This is the first letter that was issued out by the police uh, where they were telling them not mm-hmm. to hold the rally. And then the second letter was issued out where they were telling them to disregard the first letter mm-hmm. and, in fact, hold the rally. Mm-hmm. But this is what happened after they mm-hmm. went. The mm-hmm. Yeah. This letter, the, the last letter came on the 7th. They yeah. had to have the rally on the eighth. Yeah. So this was like a day before. The last so it was yeah. like Mwavale said in Palace Mini was that you, okay, you can have your rally. Yeah. And then when they went to the venue of the place to actually have the rally, the police stopped them. Check it out. I have famous tracks from my parents that we proceed with the rally. Without any formal communication from ourselves as under police, our people are going to come through. Okay. Now yes. I will get you the connection in the police we have one to spokesperson. Yes. I'm not in that position to uh, to answer to your what but what I can advise you, you go and see the officer commanding or the commission of police. My instructions is that I secure this place and I'll secure it. So the no, there's no problem no, with no, you no. We we respect your, your no, duty. No. There will be at the moment. Yes. Uh, there will be no rally here. And the reason you, being, no, you, you no, gave us permission no. to hold the rally yesterday, as in writing, and we have that document. No, that Unless there's a fresh position, Mr. which Mr. we do not have. No, no, I can hear that was saying that uh, there are right people who have a channel. So who do we see now? The officer if commanding or the commissioner. So they've given us, they've verbally, they've verbally can, cancelled our, our rally. No, no, I don't know anything what you're talking about. So your, your written, instructions are just to secure the No, yes, we are saying that even your written 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 I believe he's their lawyer, right, Mr. Mwila, Simon Mwila. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's also, I think, a legal chairperson for the Socialist Party. Yes, yeah, so that's him having a back and forth with the police, uh, which was a bit confusing to us. What is your stance exactly? Uh, does it mean there is no communication within the police? I don't know. Yeah, in a venue for policeman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is it's this is now crazy. hard to understand what they are doing. Yeah, the the police should really be an obje- an objective service rather than a service that seems to be playing sides they are playing sides yeah and uh, it's unfortunate that we're witnessing this in the country mm. especially under this government when this was what happened in the previous government against this this uh the the, the, the current government when they were in opposition I honestly hope that stopping the opposition will not actually make them more popular uh which will be of course not working in their favor in leaving you today, we'll leave you with a video of Mr. Hichilema addressing the immunity issue of Mr. Lungo. Honestly speaking, this is something that I think uh, more seriously now we need to get more clarity on because we've talked about this before. But anyway, you do watch this one and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. I hear people talk about immunity, immunity. Why are you talking about immunity? The immunity of the head of state is only relevant during the time they are in the presidency. The crimes they commit outside the presidency is not covered by that immunity. That's the law. So why are you talking about immunity? I don't understand.